This episode is sponsored by Total Boat. Click on the links in the description to see the products that I used to make an outdoor tabletop that's built to last. All right, welcome back to the shop. I'm John Peters. And as you can see, this outdoor tabletop failed. Kind of expected it to actually. Uh, if you didn't see that video, this is a tabletop that I built more than 25 years ago. And originally it was meant to be inside and it lived inside for about 15 years. It was in my parents' house and when they downsized, I got it back. The steel base went into the woods and the top went into storage. And then last year we were having a graduation party and my wife said, let's use that top or that table outside. So I scuffed up the lacquer finish and put a few coats of varnish on it. So right there, that's a bad idea because lacquer is not a good choice for an outdoor project. This wood is hickory. This is the first and only time I've ever used hickory, so I don't have a lot of experience with it. I'm not sure if it's good for outdoor projects or not, but the lacquer is definitely not a good choice. And when it comes to outdoor finishes, you really have to follow all the steps to get a good strong finish that will last outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new top. And as you can see, this top is made in two pieces. That was part of the design. I'm gonna make this next top in one piece and I'm going to make it with Sapili. And I would say Sapili is probably my first choice for outdoor projects. It has a really nice tight grain. It's very stable, the boards are nice and straight, and it's just really easy to use. So we'll go ahead and cut these boards to a rough length and then join them together to make the top. When I say cutting the boards to a rough length, that means cutting the boards just a little heavier than what I'll need for the tabletop. Cutting the boards to a rough length makes it easier to get an accurate cut when ripping the boards on the table saw. These boards are described as 1x8 S4S. The S4S stands for surfaced on four sides, and the 1x8 is the thickness and width of the board. The actual measurement of the board is always a little smaller than the description. So in this case, a 1x8 actually measures 3 quarters of an inch thick, by seven and a quarter inches wide. Even though these boards are S4S, I'll rip a little off each side of the board to make sure that I get a nice tight seam when I glue the boards together. I'll use dominoes to join the boards together. The dominoes help with aligning the boards and unlike biscuits, dominoes actually do add strength to the joint. It's my experience that the best glue for an outdoor tabletop is Thixo Epoxy. The last time I used this was about a year ago and I left the mixing tip on and that's what you're supposed to do. I'll remove the old mixing tip and replace it with a new one. It's a good idea to squeeze out a two or three inch long bead to make sure the epoxy is mixed in the mixing tip before you use it on your project. I'll apply the epoxy to both edges of the board and spread it over the surface before joining the boards together. Because this is a pretty big top, I'm building it in two halves, and then I'll join the two halves together in the clamps. One of the nice things about working with the Thixo Epoxy is you've got a lot of working time, at least two hours, maybe more, and this takes away some of the stress when you're doing a big glue up. Another nice thing about Thixo is because it's thick, it doesn't run and drip all over the place and make a mess. 
You may not have seen these clamps before. I don't think they're very popular. I found out about them from the guys over at Green Street Joinery. And they're made in the USA. They're actually made in Dubuque, Iowa, and they're called Dubuque Clamps. And I'll have a link to them down in the description below if you want to check them out. I gave the top a good sanding off camera, and now I'm using the old tabletop as a pattern to cut the shape. After tracing the pattern, I'll use a jigsaw to make the cut, and I'll make sure to make the cut heavy and leave the line. Now I can use the old tabletop again with a flush cut bit in the router to finish the cut. I started to get a little tear out from the router bit, so here I'm using the climb cutting technique to make the cut. Climb cutting is when you move the router in the same direction that the router bit is spinning. This is sometimes considered a little dangerous, but if you brace for it and you're careful, it's an effective way to make the cut and avoid tear out. I like to add a drip edge to the bottom of outdoor tabletops. A drip edge is a groove set about an inch to an inch and a half in on the bottom of the tabletop. The drip edge will prevent water from rolling underneath the table. When the water hits the drip edge, it falls to the ground. After routing in the drip edge, I'll use a small roundover bit to add a slight roundover to the bottom of the top. For the finish, I'm using Total Boat's Gleam Spar Varnish Gloss. It's important to know that even if you want a satin finish, at least the first four coats need to be gloss because there's a higher UV protection in the gloss finish. So just to be clear, I'm going to repeat myself again. If you want a satin finish, first apply four coats of the gloss, sanding in between coats with 220 sandpaper, and then your final two coats would be satin. That'll be six coats of finish total. In this case I want a gloss finish so I'm going to finish both the bottom and top of the table with six coats of gloss finish sanding in between coats with 220 sandpaper. When it comes to applying a varnish I'm okay with applying the first one or two coats outside that way if a bug or something lands in the finish it still needs to be sanded and more coats need to be applied but after the second coat, I like to apply the additional coats indoors. I'll try to apply one coat very early in the morning. That way the finish is set up enough for me to come in mid-morning and still be able to work in the shop and make some sawdust. And then I'll apply a second coat at the very end of the day. After allowing the last coat of varnish to cure for two or three days, I've attached it to the steel base and now I'll use the four-wheeler and this kind of homemade sled to drag it over to the patio. Okay, and here's the table, and it's already had some use. We had another graduation party. My son Michael graduated college this year. So we that was the big push to get this table done for the weekend. And it was a big hit. I think the table looks great. Gotta love Sapele. It's such a beautiful wood. So easy to grain match. And this is, I think, the fourth project that I've used the Total Bow Gleam Spar Varnish. Last year, I made the new tabletop for the outdoor dining table down at my mom's house, and that still looks great. I used this finish on the natural mahogany Japanese-inspired coffee table that's up by the grill. That's been outside all year. It looks fantastic. And then I've got the work table here by the barn, which is made with red grandis and sapele. That's the darker wood in the center. So definitely recommend these products and this process if you're going to build an outdoor tabletop. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.